For some reason, every time I get on this chair in front of the camera, Bandit wants to get on my lap. You want to look at the camera? Look over here. Yeah, let them see your face. There you go. Today, we're going to be looking at this. This is the Aiden by Kubi. Let me cover up my face there so it'll focus. It's a small cleaver, D2 steel, micarta handle scales. Comes in this light gray, sandy kind of color or black micarta. And it's got a stone wash finish on the D2 blade. I don't really like that. Um, they call it sand blasted, actually, not stone wash. I meant to say bead blasted and I said stone wash. It's a bead blasted, sand blasted type of finish on D2. Uh, keep it oiled if you're in any place where you live that is quite humid or things corrode easily. Steel does, that is. Other than that, it's a cool little knife. It's not for people or men with extra large hands. If your hands are extra large size, it's a little too small for you. My hands are just barely into the extra large range. And anybody with hands larger than mine, you're gonna find this thing way too small for your hands. But if you've got, you know, small ladies' hands, this thing's quite comfortable and anything up to men's large. So for a lot of people, itchy nose. Huh. Allergies. It's the middle of winter. We just got another five or six inches of snow in the last two days. And I'm getting all itchy all over the place. Come here, bandit. Up you go. There you go. Quit falling down. You just trying to sit on my lap? Yeah. So we're going to... Yes, I love you too. So we're going to go to the tabletop and take a good look at this thing. You might be interested. Stick around. The sheath that it comes with is all leather. It's this natural leather color. No matter which one you get, either the black or this one, you get the exact same sheath. So we've got, you know, that scallop shape around this side, not on the back, just on the front. And then stitched, stitched, it's stitched. It looks like genuine leather to me. And I've got a fair bit of leather experience. Not a super ton, but a fair bit of leather. It looks like it's real, authentic leather and not bonded leather. We've got a snap for the retention to hold the knife. It slides in and click and it holds it there. You know, no rattle or anything. A little bit of slide that you can feel it moves just a tiny bit inside there. And it behaves like any traditional leather sheath. Now, leather sheaths are not really the best for D2, especially if you live in a humid environment. If you leave, if you store your knife in a leather sheath in a humid environment, you know, say something like Louisiana or Georgia, you know, you're going to probably get corrosion on your blade. It's just what's going to happen. So make sure you leave some lubrication on your knife. If you're going to use this for some food prep, like as a camp knife, I think this is a pretty decent purpose for this knife. You know, if you do car camping, and you don't have to worry about how much you're carrying in. It's a decent little food prep knife. Your knuckles stay off the table for most of your cuts. So you can, you know, chop up stuff without hitting your knuckles on the table all the time. A traditional knife, you might not have that much room. So yeah, it'd be pretty cool for that kind of use if you've got room to carry it. Let's take a look at the price of this thing before we get too far ahead of ourselves. White Mountain Knives has got both colors in stock, listed for $51.75. Take off your 10% with coupon code CCE, and that makes it $46.58, which is pretty good because the Kubi stores that have it, they're selling it for $60. Amazon.com had it. It's out of stock there now, but I think it was $60 there as well. And, you know, 60 bucks or 46.58 which one would you choose especially if you're in the u.s you get free shipping from white mountain knives just like you do from amazon so white mountain knives is the place to get this if you're a canadian no worries at all bless you bandit no worries at all about this getting across the border go ahead and order it from the u.s and it'll get through zero issues at all 
you might have to pay duty. There's a very tiny chance that you'll have to pay duty, especially if this is all you buy. You know, the value is just too low. Okay, so we've got the sheath. Oh, I didn't talk about the belt loop here. There's the belt loop and your standard size belt easily fits in there and there's lots of room for more. This is inch and a half. So you could get a two inch belt in there, I think, if you wanted to. So yeah, it's a decent sheath. Now we'll put that to the side and focus on the knife. Like I said, it's D2 steel. It's got these holes of decreasing size up there. They're sort of like modern fullers, I guess, maybe, because they don't go all the way through. So it's just a little bit of cutout, five of them on this side, five of them on that side. You know, it's upswept, and then they've got sort of like a clipped end of the cleaver, and then it comes down sort of like a Warncliffe or sheep's foot kind of style, but I'm just calling it a cleaver. This is cleaver style. We've got a flat grind that comes almost to the spine. It's a little bit thicker behind the grind than I would prefer, but it's not super thick at all. It's like 21 thousandths. I'll do all the measurements later on, but I just want to let you know it's not terribly thin, but it's certainly not thick either. And it, you'll be able to sharpen it a number of times before it gets too thick. You have to move that edge back quite a bit. The sharpening from the factory, yeah, it's pretty poor. So I almost said prost. Uh, that's my uh, plot my my German background it's a, it's an um, dialect of German called Plotdeutsch or Low German uh, from the lowlands in Germany that's that's the language I grew up speaking and I was going to say that the sharpening was done pretty prost uh, pretty poorly um, the designer it says DD right there and I don't know if I'm going to be able to say his name. The name's on the screen there. Uh, Damiano is what I'm going to say his first name is. And Dal Emico is probably how you say his last name. Something, no, probably something close to that. That's probably not how you say it. It's probably close. If I'm lucky, it's close. I like this design. We've got, um, well, I already talked about the blade. So the handle here, we've got the micarta on there. We've got T8 screws to hold it together. It's nicely 3D milled and shaped inset liners. Uh, you can see the blade full tang coming right to the back. We've got some coarse jimping here, some more coarse jimping back there. We've got a lanyard hole with coming to a point there. So if you need to you know, crush some things, you can use that tip. Or tie a lanyard on here, it's not going to you know, bunch out very far. I, I like these inset kind of lanyard holes. It's well made. And then you've got your smaller fingers here and then index finger and middle finger each get their own separate choil. And it's very comfortable for my size hands, but it feels a bit small. It's comfortable, but feels small. I, I would have, I would have liked these handle scales to be a little bit thicker, but people with smaller hands might like it this thin. So that's pretty much about the shape of it. Does it work? Well, because it was sharpened so poorly, it didn't chop all that well for me. It didn't cut all that well for me. So what I'm going to now do, what I'm going to do now is I'll show you the edge, how it looks. You can see that the angle, it's got about two degrees variation along the length of the blade. What I'm going to do is sharpen this and then I'll talk some more about how well it works. Well now, this D2 is pretty hard stuff. They must have uh, tempered it quite hard. But I got a nice, beautiful edge on there. Not quite a mirror edge. But it cuts like it's a mirror edge. It cuts really, really well. It's, it's popping sharp. Uh, here, I'll show you. I don't usually do sh demonstrations, but just a little pressure straight in, nice and slow. If you can cut into paper and you're just pushing in really slowly, that's pretty sharp. Just try it with any of your sharp knives. Grab some paper and just stop right at the edge and just slowly go into it. 
you're going to find out if your knife is sharp or not. It's a little thicker behind the grind now. Uh, it took a while to even out that edge. It took me almost half an hour of sharpening to get this thing, you know, pristine. So, yeah, it's pretty hard D2. Time now to go over all the sizes, dimensions, and that stuff. The weight of this knife, it's 117 grams. That's 4.15 ounces. Yeah, nice light thing. The sheath is 45 grams, 1.55 ounces. Together, 162 grams, 5.7 ounces. Pretty good. The factory sharpness was 185 bess. That's because the grind angles. I'll tell you that in just a minute. Now it's 18 degrees per side. The cutting edge length, 85.1 millimeters, 3.35 inches. Blade length, tip to the closest spot on the micarta, 96.6 millimeters, 3.8 inches. How thick is the steel? 3.99 millimeters, so four millimeters basically. 0.157 of an inch, so well over an eighth of an inch. The uh, blade depth, the widest point is right up here, and that is 83. 34.8 millimeters, 1.37 inches. The thickness behind the grind, it was 0.54 millimeters, 24 thousandths of an inch. Now it's 22 and a half thousandths of an inch because of how much steel I had to take off to bring it down from 23.1 degrees and 25.2 degrees. So I brought it down from this to this. So it cuts a whole lot better now. A little over two degrees variability along the length of the blade from the factory. And now it's even 18 degrees all the way along. The length of the handle, that's at the beginning of the G10 to the very end of the steel, 95.5 millimeters, 3.76 inches. The thickness of the handle on the micarta, I didn't measure it on the screws, just in the middle of the micarta here, 12.12 .12 millimeters, that's 0.477 of an inch. The handle depth, it's widest right here, 26.3 millimeters, 1.04 inches. The uh, grip area in here, it's about nine and a half centimeters, three and three quarter inches. And the total length of this knife, I did it again, 191.5 millimeters and that many inches. <laughs> It's time for a teardown. These screws were so tight I could not get them loose. So I decided I'd put this thing into boiling water for a few minutes and uh, I let it boil. And guess what? It's already got a little bit of corrosion there by that DD. I'll just dunk this blade in my... Um... Oh, Bandit's just sneezing like crazy today. Uh, Bandit in my... Put it in my evapor rust and I'll get rid of that because that's very much just on the very surface. That's not a problem at all. I'll be able to get rid of that easily enough. I was able to get them loose. There is a lot of Loctite in there. You can even see how blue it looks in there. So let's take that apart. Oh, yeah, it's still full of water. <laughs> okay. I'll have to dry that off. But let's take this all the way apart now. That doesn't want to come out. Yep, it's sharpened and I slid it along my finger. I just cut my finger. <laughs> no, you're not going to see any blood. I'm pinching it. It's on my inside of my index finger. I'm going to finish recording this first. Because I'm professional. So that's how it's made. Lots of skeletonizing in here to help lighten it up. And there's the micarta. So, yeah, it's quite nice. I am quite happy about this knife. I've already talked about the price. Uh, what are my thoughts? It's close to being a fantasy knife, in my opinion. It's not exactly a fantasy knife, but it's close. I don't tend to review fantasy knives, and I don't review knives that are specifically and solely created for violence, you know, like daggers. It's just not what I'm into. So this thing, yeah, you can use it as a camp, small camp cleaver. Uh, if you hold it right, 
can, you know, chop your vegetables or your meat. It's just not a very big knife. Remember, the length here is three and a third inches. So you don't have an awful lot of real estate, but it's actually quite good for most things. And if you're looking for a smaller knife to take along when you go camping and you want another, you know, something else for your camp food preparations or something similar, or you just think it looked cool and maybe you're into fantasy knives and you think this thing looks like it's something you'd want in your collection, Nate, that's another reason to get it. Uh, I'll leave links down below to get them from Kubi directly if you want to, but it's $59.99 or $60. Kubi's got two websites, uh, Knife Global, or is it globalknife.com and kubiknife.com. Uh, that if you use those sites, you're buying directly from Kubi, but White Mountain Knives is quite a bit cheaper, especially after the discount. And I'll leave an Amazon link down below as well, but they're out of stock there right now. But White Mountain Knives has them both, so you don't even need to look at those other links. Just go to White Mountain Knives and use my coupon code. Do I like this knife? Is it worth, what is it, $46.58 American? which is around $60 Canadian. Is it worth that much? It is to a person who wants it, <laughs> just like everything else in the world. If somebody wants it, then it's uh, worth whatever price they're willing to pay for it, right? I will tell you one thing. The micarta right here on this side was a little bit scuffed up, and um, now it accepted a little bit of dirt. I got some dirt on there. I'm sure you can see that. That little darker spot. I got that on there while sharpening. So I'm just going to have to wash that off. That's one thing about micarta. It'll accept dirt and stains quite easily. If you uh, don't have clean hands when you use it, it'll show up. But it's not that hard to clean it either. Um, you just take it to some soap and water kitchen, like doing dishes, that kind of soap and water, and just take a little bit of a scouring pad and wash it off. Or first try just with a cloth. So the Kubi Aiden KU341 in two colors. There you go. Thanks for watching my video. Thanks to my Patreon supporters and YouTube member supporters. I know I say this most videos, but it really does make a big difference that you guys help me out and I thank you very much for it. And thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember, friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb. And bye for now.